I'm Kerry Stinson, and my journey through life has been quite an adventure. For over 20 years, I played Barney the Dinosaur on tour and seven seasons of the hugely popular TV show, Barney and Friends. Now my journey is to bring together friends and guests from all over the entertainment world for inspiring and at times amusing behind the scenes conversation. I'm Kerry Stinson, and this is Purple Roads. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Purple Roads, and you'll understand what that means in just a second. I am so glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming back. I'm so excited about our guest today. We're going to have so much fun. Uh, I want to give some love to our sponsor, Infusion HF70 Plus. Thank you so much for sponsoring this show. Um, We're a huge fan. So today, we've got someone that I had the honor to work with, a show that I love so much, and I am so excited to have Noel McNeil here with me today, who was Bear in the Big Blue House, among so many other things which we will get in today. Noel, how are you? I am good. Thanks for having me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thank you so much for, <laughs> for being here with us, to hear us babble on about being a dinosaur and a bear once upon a time. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So we did. We worked together, and goodness gracious, I can't remember the exact year, but we did. It was, it, it was definitely after 2001, so I would say probably maybe 2002-ish, like, or maybe early 2003. Yeah, I, I think that's that's when I was working on, um, on Barney and Friends, and uh, we right. came to New York to meet you. We were doing... Um, uh, we Are Family, which was a, a Nile Rogers event where they brought a ton of characters together. Um, right. And we did a promo video, which I just found out you actually wrote that. <laughs> that yeah. Uh, it was, yeah. After, after 9-11, Nile Rogers did uh, this We Are Family, because he wrote We Are Family, yes. that classic song. And he got all these uh, celebrities together and did it right after, just to show, like, you know, we're all united. And then for the six-month anniversary, he wanted to do a children's version. So that's why he got all, like, the children celebrities. Okay. So that's why it's this com- – it's, it's on YouTube. And it's this compilation video of, of characters like Pooh and, um, at that time, Stanley, And then all, like, puppet characters, like, from Sesame Street right. and Bear in the Big Blue House and Barney. Yes. And what was really cool is that we actually got to go to each other's set. So uh, – I and Barney got to go upstairs to um, Between the Lions and uh, interact with them, and Big Bird was there. And then I got to go with Bear uh, to Sesame Street. Very cool. And so Sesame, so Bear was there with Sesame Street between Big Bird and Snuffy. And you thought Bear was big until you get him between like Big Bird and Snuffy, and he's like a teddy bear compared <laughs> to those those giants. Yes. And so then um, they wanted to just send a video of this to schools. And so there was a promo video that you and I worked on. Yes. And I got to write. Rick Fernandez directed it, and uh, he asked me to write it. And so it's with Barney and Bear in a FedEx truck. Yes. And pulls up to the school and personally delivers the first copy to this school. And then saying that it will be, avail- may- be made available to schools across America to, uh, to, sh- to show kids um, the video and just like – Help them, you know, just reassure them that, you know, in case anything happens, there are people there to take care of you and right. you'll be all right. You'll be right. safe. So and just have these these two guys who would actually do it. So, yes, that's how we actually met, worked together. Yeah. So, and it was it, it was so fun for 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 me. Uh, Dean went was with me on that one. The voice of Barney was with me and we were right. fascinated to see see Bear, see that costume. Yeah, I was fascinated to see Barney finally because I always heard about it. And so I like kind of stuck inside. It was like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, good lord! <laughs> right. And you know, funny enough, like, we had the same reaction seeing Bear. <laughs> it's like, just like, wow! It's like, I mean, just the things you guys were just able to do, right? Um, and just the way you just like synced it up between the action and the voice so well it was just like it's it's admirable, and. And so seeing it like for like, and and, and just like seeing how he, even it was just delivered, it's just like this 
this sort of Jurassic Park kind of crate right. <laughs> that he was like, delivered in. Yes. <laughs> it was very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, he travels in a, in a massive wardrobe uh, box. Right, just shy of like when you open it, like this sort of like fog should like pour out. <laughs> 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 Taser standing by. Right. <laughs> And then he comes out and gives you a big hug. He's like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> Just clears the smoke out. It's like, yeah. Yeah, so that's how that's how we actually that's how we actually met work together. One of those one of those times where it would be hard to nearly impossible to have that many iconic brands like work together right. for, for one single thing again. Um, because because that that's the thing. A lot of people don't think of these characters as brands or franchises, but they are. They it's are. Like it's, it's part of that business of show that we are in. And right. so, yeah, so just so just having, like, the permission from, like, all of these different companies to have them all together in the same thing. And even then, just, like, you know, making sure that so-and-so is not too close to this character or right. this character doesn't have more lines than that character is, like, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But it felt like, you know, I remember that so well, and I remember it felt very special. It felt like we were doing something. Um, oh, yeah. Very it was, important, it was very special. Totally special. Yeah, it was great. And it was like, like I said, you know, it'll probably never happen again. Right. So we were really lucky that our characters actually got to be a part of this. And it was really special. And people still remember it. Like, people who were, like, in school remember seeing the video, like, at, a, at an assembly. Right. And uh, it was great. And in and for that day, because we were shooting it with the, the principal, all that, and then we did like this sort of meet and greet in the auditorium with kids. Yes. With Bear and Barney. And so kids actually got to meet both of them and get their pictures taken, which was really cool. <laughs> yes, it, it was amazing. So you mentioned the business, the show that we're in. I'm, I'm very curious, how did you get into, to, to because you've done both, um, costume work and then also puppetry. How did right. you get into that? Um. It, it started when I was a kid. I always said that there were more puppet shows on when mm. I was a kid. So when I was a kid, there was shows like uh, Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop, who was a female puppeteer, uh, ventriloquist. Uh, there was uh, Paul Winchell, who did Winchell Mahoney Time, okay, which was this like syndicated show, and he had he was a ventriloquist too. He had Jerry Mahoney and uh, Knucklehead Smith, and Paul Winchell then went on to do the voice of Tigger. For, oh, I didn't know that. For Winnie the Pooh. He was the original Winnie the Pooh uh, uh, right. character, Tigger. He was the original Tigger. I did other voices for like Hanna Barbera and like Disney cartoons. He also invented the artificial heart. Really? So puppetry, is, yes, puppetry can save lives. So yes, Paul Winchell. Wow. Yes. Yeah, and there was like other shows. There was a uh, Captain Kangaroo. Um, of course, there was um, Mister Rogers, and. Uh, when I was about, I guess when I was about seven years old, that's when on a Sunday night, it was a half hour show on PBS, local PBS station, and it was hosted by these two puppets about this brand new show that was coming on the next day. And these two puppets were puppets I had never seen before because, you know, Mr. Rogers, you know, had like this kind of puppet like like that. Right. And Sherry Lewis had like Lamb Chopper, which was a sock and sure. all that. But these two puppets I had never seen before because like one – had a shape of his head was like a football and the other one's kind of like a banana and their names were Ernie and Bert and they're talking about this brand new show starting tomorrow morning wow. called Sesame Street and they showed highlights of Sesame Street and I remember seeing Big Bird for the first time and it was this puppet that could actually walk around free it wasn't hiding behind anything it could actually walk around and I was like fascinated by that so I was beyond the age of Sesame Street but I just watched Sesame Street all the time and then during high school, that's when The Muppet Show came out. Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, Jim Henson and these people, they're making a living from doing puppetry. Maybe I could do it too. So I did all this research and um, finding out, like, is there, like, a college I could go to to study to be a puppeteer? So I went to I, – I did research the old-fashioned way back then. There was no internet. So I went to what's called the library, <laughs> which is great. It's like Barnes & Noble, but it's free. Right. <laughs> and I researched, and I found, actually, at the time, there were two schools. One is the University of Connecticut in Storrs, Connecticut, with a four-year puppetry program. To this day, 
you can get your master's degree in puppetry. Really? <laughs> yes. And then the other one was here in New York, and it was in Brooklyn, New York, and it, it was at Pratt Institute, and there was a theater course okay. at that time, and within the theater course was a puppetry course. And so I had these two choices. Now, my mom was a single mom. My dad walked out on us when I was 18 months old, and so she was taking care of me and that her mom and uncle at that time. And so I, like, all my research was set up, and she was working two jobs to send me to private school for decent education because I grew up in central Harlem. So it was a choice between the high school where the kid got stabbed or the other high school where the kid got shot. So she sent me to private school downtown and worked sure. two jobs to do this. So I'm going to the single mom with two jobs. <laughs> and I said, okay, I know what I want to be, a <laughs> puppeteer. <laughs> I can just imagine. <laughs> and so... She said, okay, what do we have to do? And I said, oh, um, okay, well, there's University of Connecticut and there's Pratt Institute. Okay, what do we have to do? Well, this is due by this time, this is due by this time. Okay, what else do we have to do? That's all she kept saying. She never belittled it. She never dismissed it. She just kept saying, what do we have to do to make this happen? Because she always said to me, you can always get a job, get a career. Wow. And at the end of all this, she said, and if for some reason you want to become a lumberjack tomorrow, we'll figure out how to do it. So it really helped having somebody off the start who actually like supported it. So I actually, in case you're curious, I did end up going to Pratt Institute. <laughs> And oh, I'm curious. It, it, you know, it's yeah. fascinating because that's why I became a purple dinosaur. My father was the same way. He was so supportive about it. You know, when I told them what I was going to do, he didn't question it. He didn't, you know, I was working a part-time job at a Chili's and I got into to the costume with Barney and they were supportive the whole time. And even when I said, you know, I think I'm, I think this purple dinosaur is going to take off. This was before the TV show. I'm going to quit Chili's. And he said, you know, I don't know if that's a great idea, but you need to do what you need to do. I'm going to support you. And next thing I know, I end up at Radio City Music Hall. And, <laughs> and after that show, my dad was there. He had taken a train down from a business meeting he had. And he said, well, you were right. And, of course, it wasn't about being right. It was yeah. just that he supported me to let my dreams go where they, they wanted to go. And obviously your mom did that. I think that's that's amazing. Because I think that's very yeah. hard for parents to trust their oh, yeah. kid and just support them. And But it's so important. You know, how are you going to become these things if you don't have that support? Right, exactly. You don't need somebody like belittling you or dismissing it because you already have that voice inside your head doing that anyway. Right. So... And you'll have like the outside world like interfering with your dreams. So you don't need somebody at home to sing it as well. So, and you know, as a parent now myself, because I have a son who's 14 going on 42, and just like, you know, that, that balance of like support and love while still, you know, pushing like, no, you could do more. You could do a little bit more than this. So right. It's like, it's like, I, I know you. It's like, this. it's a challenge, but it's nothing you can't handle because you have to prepare them for, for leaving. That's the whole, that's, that's what I figured out, like the whole point of parenthood. It's like right. you prepare them to leave. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, so it's like I, I want to be there for, for him the way my mom was there for me when, when that time comes. As is, we, we support him anyway. Like he, sure. He, he, he wanted to learn to play a piano. And so... You know, we got a cheap piano first, just to right. see like how long is this going to last. Sure, sure. And and then and then after like six months, no, actually about three months, he was like, I was like, okay, so we upgraded to another piano. Right. It was a little bit better. Yeah. And it's like, so now he's asking for like yet another one. It's like, uh, uh, you know, it's been a year. Let's <laughs> right. Let, let's wait a little bit longer, right? <laughs> just to see. <laughs> but he's really good. He's a vocal major at a. And his, uh, he just started high school. He's a vocal major, and he's great. He's really, it's really good. And we, so like again, we're just like supporting him. He wanted to go to a performing arts high school. I was like, okay, and helped him prepare for the audition because you have to audition sure. for performing arts high school. Unlike the other parts of the country, here, here in New York City, 
uh, for middle school and then for high school, um, you can choose a school outside of your district. So for elementary school, you're within your district. But then after that, you can go anywhere you want to. Oh, wow. As long as they accept you. And so um, we did that for middle school and then for high school, too. And because he wanted to go to a performing arts one, you have to audition in order to get in as well as have you know, decent grades. Right. And so he, uh, so he got in and just was so supportive of him because of that. That's amazing. And, uh, did, did he ever, was he ever interested in puppetry or anything that you're doing or did he want to kind of do his yeah. own path? It was like, it was like for a while, like I, I did these, um, I, I created these original musicals for the Bronx zoo for their boo at the zoo, the Halloween celebration. Oh, okay. So I, so for three years in a row, I had these shows and for the, for the, uh, Last year, mm-hmm. I got him involved, and he was like one of the puppeteers of right. the show. Because I thought it'd be cool for kids in the audience to see this kid actually like performing. Right. And I was actually shocked how good he was. Wow. <laughs> At lip sync, <laughs> I like I really didn't have to give him any tips. I have this footage of him um, doing the rehearsal with the uh, the other puppeteers. And I was just like, I was like floored, like, oh my God, he actually gets this. Wow. <laughs> it's like, it's in his DNA. <laughs> but now he wants to like, you know, do, do, do the, the music thing. It's like, that's great. That's awesome. It's like, what did he think about music. you being Bear? That when oh, did, that was When great. did he, he understand like, that? And what did he think about it when he did? He was, when he was, when he was really little, and we would watch puppet shows, like, I would show him like Sesame Street old school, like the yeah. original episodes of Sesame Street, the ones I grew up with, right. like the first like you know, 10 years, 15 sure. years. And then uh, I showed him The Muppet Show. And then I sh- showed him Bear. And for like, when he was young, I would say that he, he kind of got the, he finally understood the, about puppetry because when he was really little, he was about, I guess he was about four years old. That's when we did Between the Lions, the last two seasons, and it was in Jackson, Mississippi. And my wife brought him and uh, they visited, so he got to the set, so he could suddenly, see, he saw how the characters he saw on TV were puppets, and I would say that, you know, Peter's helping uh, Theo, and I'm helping Lionel, and so when we started watching shows again, like the Muppet Show, he said, who's, he would say, who's helping, who's helping Kermit? i said, well, that was my friend Jim, and uh, who's helping Piggy? Well, that was, that's my friend Frank. So then, finally, when he was about, I guess, almost six, he was like five, almost six years old, and he finally said to me one night, he said, Dad, who helps Bear? <laughs> and I said, do you really want to know? <laughs> He's like, yeah. And I said, me. And he did this look of... <laughs> and I said, I said, haven't you ever noticed how my voice and Bear's voice kind of sound the same? <laughs> and he did this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's how you finally found out. <laughs> well, that's, that's a perfect segue to this. So let's talk about it because I, I told you I was a huge fan of Bear. Thank and I, I love the show. I love every aspect of it. Still, that song is so, it's, it's kind of like some of the Barney songs. It's the same thing with, yeah. with yeah, it's just like it's in, it's, in, it's, in, it's in you. It's like the music director was Peter Lurie, and Peter's like the sort of like the like the, the master of kids TV songs. Like he he wrote the theme to the Magic School Bus, like the original theme to the Magic School okay. Bus. That's his. That's him, which is one of the best themes of all time. And uh, I first met Peter when I worked on this show back in 1989. It was called Eureka's Castle, and he was the music director for Eureka's yeah. Castle. And then he became music director for, for Bear. And what's nice thing about Bear is like he and the creator, Mitchell Creeman, brought these other people in, like um, Brian uh, Woodbury, who, um, who has like, gone on to do like, great things, and uh, um, David Charney. And um, it was all these songs that like just mixed styles, like, Right. Western and ballads and like vaudeville and gospel and rock and roll and rap yeah and and just even the theme of Bear was just just so different it was very jazzy it is and I yeah. 
it's 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 addictive. It's uh, it's yeah. such an awesome song. So the voice did, did they have an idea? Was it your to kind of <laughs> use your voice? Where did that? Where did Barry's voice? Um, I I was I was auditioning for this uh, one show um, in the morning. It was like a game show they were thinking of with this sort of alien okay. as the host, and it was like this big creature. It was kind of like a almost plant like. Like, think of Audrey from Little Shop of Horrors. Okay. And as I'm sitting in there in this prototype, I'm thinking, well, why don't you just get Marty Robinson to do this? Because Marty designed and built the original Audrey. So, right. like, this would be perfect for Marty. But I did it. It was like, okay. So then I went home. And then around 4 o'clock, that's when I got this call saying, no, could you come back? Because there's another character for another show we want you to audition for. And I was like, okay. So they had to fax me. Yes, kids. Fax me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, Google it. Um, uh, unfortunately, the, the I know what that means. And, and also the sketch of, of what the characters look like. And it was like this bear with these little critters and like the moon behind them. It's like, oh, this looks cute. And I was like in the cab and I was like looking at the sides. And then I walked in and Peter Van Roden, who was the executive at the time, he said, thanks for coming. Okay. Just use your own voice. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, but we're the bumpets. We don't, we don't do that. What? I said, no, use your own voice. And they wanted it to be um, different from Barney because Barney was so popular. Sure. And Barney had a certain cartoony voice. Yes. So for Bear, they wanted to try something different. And being the Muppets, how we always do funny voices, they wanted to see, you know, could we create a character that just had a fairly, like, you know, normal voice of right. an adult yeah and i was like okay sure um and i kept trying to sneak in like a cartoony voice like, no 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 keep doing your own voice i was like okay so i'm inside the prototype and i'm, I'm it feels great just to be inside it it's like it felt so good right. and then i realized wait a minute no it's almost five o'clock it's a friday this is a courtesy they're not gonna have you do this it's right. like they just want to like cover the bases so i said ah screw it i'm just gonna have fun so I just like kept running back and forth and just running around and just when the script said like, you know, he sniffs the camera, you know, he, he says he sniffs the viewer. Right. I just jammed the nose all the way into the camera <laughs> and pulled it back out again. <laughs> and just like, and he's like, he's talking about water and he has like a glass of water and yeah. I just like held it right up to the camera and like angled his face right behind it and just like, just, and just did stuff like that and it's like okay that's it i'm done you know and i just like left and then the following monday just before six o'clock that's when i got the call saying no we want you to be bear and i said what <laughs> <laughs> it's like you mean all that stuff worked what <laughs> yeah so uh, yeah so that's how i got it so well, and yeah, then we that's did, how uh, it happens yeah right when yeah. you when you yeah. When By not caring, just let go. Right when you just let go, <laughs> yeah. and kind of you kind of create. If right. you force it, yeah, it doesn't don't... work, right? When you when you just kind of listen to yourself, it's funny yeah. how you kind of you yeah. Can when create you those amazing things and just like when you overthink it and care too much, right? <laughs> yeah, you just go in and just like just I'm just gonna have fun. Right. Either you like it or you won't, and then that's it. Right, just like. At least, I, at least I had fun doing it. Right. And I've, I've, and I've, had, a, I've had other auditions just like that where I've had fun and they've chosen somebody else. Sure. But like, hey. Uh, well, so, but you know that's so, part of the business. Oh, yeah. It's so, it's so arbitrary. And, you right. know, like, you know, and telling my you know, son, like, you know, you know, it'll happen to you too. You know, there'll be a point where you are, you're probably absolutely perfect. But for some reason, they'll just use somebody else and it's through no fault of your own. It's like, right. Because that show is. Well, that's exactly, <laughs> and it's smart that you're teaching him that now because that yeah. can be the you know how many times was I told no? It was a ridiculous amount. I just kept going until yeah, you know. I was like I auditioned for something, uh, um, and it was like he helped me with it actually, mm -hmm. and I still didn't get it. And he was just like shocked. It's like what? <laughs> he give it to you? What? And it's like it's like it happens. It's right. like it's nothing I can do. <laughs> it's, it's not up to me. And then telling him about how, and we, I think we went on YouTube and I showed him like, there's like different movies or TV shows where you see 
like the first auditions for these characters and see other people doing it. Oh yeah, that's right. It was the um, it was for the on YouTube. There's the office auditions, uh-huh. and you see the auditions right. at the 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 characters the the actors did for characters. But a lot of them didn't actually audition for their character. <laughs> like John Krasinski, who we all know as Jim, he actually auditioned as Dwight. <laughs> and, and that happens um, a lot. Yeah. And uh, Jenna, Jenna Elfman, who is, you know, um, Pam, she actually auditioned to be another female character. Right. She auditioned to be Angela. And so it's just weird. And then you see other people. And then um, there was the actor... Who now he's known for a better call Saul, and uh, he auditioned for for Michael, the part of Michael Scott, mm-hmm. and it was just like it was really interesting. And then you see um, Steve Carell's audition for Michael Scott, and it, and you just know from see, it was like one of those things you just see it and you just know from that audition tape like yeah that's it, that's right. him. But then later on in the, in the season, because God knows my son has been obsessed with The Office for so long <laughs> that he's seen, we've seen like every episode. And so there's this episode later on where Pam is uh, um, um, interviewing for a job uh-huh. to be near Jim, who's yep. in Philadelphia now. And she's auditioning, I'm, I'm interviewing for this job at this company, and she's meeting the boss. And the joke is, he, he says inappropriate things, he's trying to be funny, and he's not... And she says to the camera, oh, my God, it's Michael Scott. <laughs> but what was funny is they used the actor who's known for Better Call Saul, right. the guy from that original audition. And so it's like he's doing his Michael Scott. <laughs> so that was like the inside joke. Right. It's like you finally get to do this character. Right. <laughs> <laughs> which, was really, which was really cool. <clears throat> what was your favorite part about playing Bear? Oh, I got to uh, – I like the fact that Bear was an adult. He's not. He wasn't a kid. There's so many kid, I kid characters, right. kid shows that are, that are kids. Yeah, which is fine. But Bear was like one of the first ones in a long time who was an adult who had to take care of these other kid characters. So it kind of became this thing between my voice and then Lynn Thingpad who was the voice of Luna. Mm-hmm. We had these very clear, distinct adult voices. So it became this thing where. All the adult characters on Bear would have these distinctive sort of adult voices. But then any kid character would have a cartoony voice, which was fine. And so I like the fact that Bear was an adult. So then when he did appearances, he could actually be an adult. And so being on Hollywood Squares, he could be a little cheeky sometimes right. and a little snarky. Right. And uh, so it was nice. Um, yeah, because that's but the not... one thing. When it, but the one thing when whenever I did appearances, I think the best part of being bear was I always asked if I could go to a children's hospital, and so having bear actually go to a children's hospital and meet uh, kids there was great because um, walking in whenever I could, um, people the parents would be there, and it's not a doctor coming in, it's not a nurse, it's not right. someone taking the kid for a test and seeing bear walk in suddenly their kid isn't a patient anymore. The kid's a kid again right. and they can see the kid like laugh and smile for that. For those just few moments, like that was, that was always worth it just to see them like light up and just really appreciate like, you know, having this moment of childhood. And then there was sometimes where um, bear couldn't go in because of, um, any medical restrictions, sure. so I would wave at the door. Right. But there were a couple of hospitals. There was one great one in Chicago that has like a, a studio so that Bear could do. I always had a little 20 minute show. So Bear did this little 20 minute show in the studio right. so that the kids who couldn't come out of their rooms could actually watch on their TV set Bear and like he could say hi to them. So the best part of being Bear was like visiting actually uh, children in the in the real world. Which was great. That's right. how I got to know Give Kids the World in, in uh, Florida. Because Give Kids the World is this resort for kids with extreme illnesses. And I got to go there. And it's, it's set up so that there are kids who, if they have what's called, very often they have what's called a rush wish, where mm-hmm. a kid is so severely sick that they have to do this wish. They have to pull it all together within like 36 hours. Right. And so they will have like, the airfare, the car, and the hotel, and the park tickets, like, all set up so they can, like, email it, like, 
FedEx like, like the next day. And, like, people can get on the plane and just head down. And it's in Kissimmee, Florida. And the rooms are set up so that any medical equipment that's needed can be there. And all the parks are in on it. Any hotels, uh, if they're full, any hotels are in on it. It's great. It was started by this one man. And they work with Make-A-Wish and other uh, children's charities. And it's a great place. And if you ever have a chance to go and volunteer, do it. You can donate online. It's such an amazing, amazing place. Uh, you know, I was very fortunate to do a lot of that myself, of going to hospitals, doing the visits, doing Make-A-Wish. I never did that, and that's amazing hearing that. I, I was not aware of that one. But Yeah, it's great. Barney would have been wonderful there because it's like it's like they have this little theater so i did like a little show but it's so big you could also like just roam around outside it's, right it's awesome it's it's set up kind of like it's, it's almost set up like a little theme park and with the different buildings and uh they have like the ice cream parlor where you can get like and all the food all the food is free for for for, for families there sure. every every day is like either it's somebody's birthday or it's christmas Right. It's just like, it's just a celebration every single day. And I told my wife, like, if we ever had lived down there, we would just volunteer there. And I told my friends who are puppeteers down there, like, you know, go, just go and volunteer, just do a little show. It's awesome. It's great. In fact, the last time I was there, I was doing an appearance at, at um, um, Disney World, the, uh -huh. the Very Merry Christmas Parade. So I arranged so I could go to Give Kid the World. And I did my little twenty-minute show, and there's this little girl who loves seeing the show, and Bear got to talk to her afterwards. And it turns out she had this wish to meet Bear, wow. and that's why they were going to go that afternoon to the studios because there was still the the Bear show playing at the studios okay. with our recorded voices and the puppeteers right. lip-syncing to it. And so it was just by sheer coincidence that. I happened to be there wow. with the actual bear right. <laughs> that she got to meet. <laughs> wow. And so to cover bear's bases, bear said, you know, the show is really, really fun, but it's really exhausting. So I might be out of breath. So I might not be able to talk to you and say hi, but right. I'll still be there. <laughs> right. Just to cover the fact that he isn't going to say anything because he's not allowed to. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that's a fascinating thing because we did so many hospital appearances and didn't usually travel with the voice. It was right. usually just Barney going to a hospital, and I right. never had kids say, why aren't you speaking? I think they were right. so blown away by just seeing Barney and being able to get a hug and talk to him that right. really yeah. it wasn't needed. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah it was like with Barney. I mean, see, when you see Barney, it's like, that's Barney. It's like, right. <laughs> it's like that's it. Right. Like you said, just getting the hug and just, and just getting to interact with them. And it's like, was... It's huge. So kids don't kids don't care. It's, no. just, it's just like one of those moments where you get to actually let the kid be a kid, and the parents actually seeing that. Being a parent now, I, I appreciate now uh, what I did in terms of a parent, just like having their kid just be a kid again, and it was really it, w it was really fun. So it was nice. <laughs> Isn't it just amazing? I never realized how special it was. I mean, I knew it was special. But what I, I didn't realize that none of the kids were ever sad. They were yeah. so happy to see their favorite, their friend, Barney. And right. it was just these amazing experiences. And I just got blessed more than, than I could ever give to them. The, the power those kids have and the strength is just amazing. And, of course, their parents being able to, to be there. It's oh, yeah. just an amazing experience. Oh, yeah. And, they, and these people like remember it for for forever right i mean i get i get fan email from people uh thanking me for for bear and like everything and now tweets come up about you know thanking bear you're a part of my childhood thank right. you so much and it's like like you said at the time you really don't think how long lasting this is right and it's like and it's you don't really think of it as a job no. because it's not really a job no, <laughs> there, it's not. there are worse jobs right <laughs> but it's, it's really something something special so that's why with 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 bear i don't know if you ever did it well i mean you kind of did it with barney because you had kids yes um on the show right but with but with bear because of this universe that you lived in where the town of woodland valley was just like all 
animals. Right. So we would occasionally have kids visit the set. And it was a great way of kind of reminding us, like, oh, yeah, this is why we're doing it. Yes. So by, by the fourth season, the, our last season, we actually set it, it. It was so popular at that point that we set up like twice a month on a, like on a Wednesday morning. We would like from nine o'clock to 10 o'clock, we would tape what we could. Right. And then at 10 o'clock, we would stop. And then for half an hour, that's when we would have families come through and visit the set and we we got it down to it was almost like a disney ride where they would like <laughs> walk up the ramp like through the attic and then there'd be the auto pond there's like pip and pop and the auto pond there's like and then you go into the uh and and then the kitchen is like trilo and ojo and there's tutter in his mouse hole right. and then you come through and in the living room the last thing would be bear in the swing and you would have a picture with bear in the swing and then they would go out the door and then our assistant director, Dean Gordon, had it set up so that it would be videotaping the entire time. And so people would get a copy, a video copy oh, that's so of, cool. of the visit to take with them. He called it the bar mitzvah tape. So I was like, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> it just like, it just like leave. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah, but it was like a nice re- reminder of like, yes, right. this is why we're doing it. <laughs> this is, why, this is yeah. what we're doing it for. The kids were great. And they just like loved it. It was like, Really fun. We had celebrities. We had Kelly Ripper come by for the 100th episode with her kids, oh, and that was cool. fun. Yeah, we had uh, we did several Make a Wish um, at the studio. We'd be filming um, Barney and Friends, and I had already experienced them, but a lot of the crew had never seen that before. Right. And you know, we obviously all knew what we were doing and the importance of what we were doing for children. But to actually see a make a wish, it really I mean, there wasn't a dry eye in the house. It was it was very inspiring oh, yeah. for everyone. You know, because when you're filming these shows, they're long hours and there's a lot involved in doing them. Yeah. And it it really reminds you what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well for us, we get to play, right? When you're yeah. in a big purple costume, you you're just having fun. But yeah. uh it, it really showed everyone, you know, hey, this is this is what we're doing and, and how important of what we're doing. Oh yeah, it's like it was it was great when I did. Um, Bear was also international, and so um, he's being introduced to the um, Mexican market. Yeah. So I went down uh-huh. and did appearances, and then I asked, like, could I go to a children's hospital? Right. And there was only like one hospital that, uh, around, and it was. It was pretty much like as one parent said, this is like, you know, they, she thanked us for coming because uh, nobody ever thinks to come, you know, here. Right. And it's, it was like the hospital where it was pretty much like the last stop hospital. Yeah. Because it was like, so um, I went to, so I did my show at the, the auditorium. Uh-huh. This like this big theater. Right. That they would have there. And they brought kids in that could come. And, I did, did my show, and there was like one kid, this one kid in the, the front row, and he was in a, uh, a wheelchair, and he was, uh, like half his body was paralyzed. Wow. And at one point, I sang, I sang the song, it's like, uh, um, where it's like, th- the things about you that I like, yeah. and then towards the end, uh, like, Bear knelt down in front of him and put his hand on his hand and sang right to him, and because he was paralyzed, I could see because that was the other thing I actually was able to see out at this point. There was like another camera in Bear's like left eye, uh-huh. and so I had a monitor so I could actually see hit Bear vision. Right. So I was like looking at him, and I could see like for half of his face, like half his like you could see like one corner like do that, meaning it's like he was smiling, like yeah. he was like smiling, and I could hear <laughs> I could hear the people near me who were like from hence and all that. I could, I could hear like <laughs> like this is good gasping. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and inside, and then inside, because you're doing this too. Yes. It's like you have to hold it together. Like yes. you can't break down. Yeah. So I'm just like I'm smiling till like my gums are hurting. Just to like keep it together, no, keep right. it together. It's like, right. That's it. This is a good moment. <laughs> right. And just like you know, and like ending the show, and then you know walking back, and just like you know, once I get out, I go to the bathroom to change, and that's when I, I just broke down in yeah. the bathroom and just like cried because. <laughs> It was it was like such a 
it was such an emotional moment. But that's why we that's why we do it. It's that's like it's it. one of those. It's like one. It's it's we're very privileged in that what we get to do has such a positive effect on so many lives that we have no idea that how many lives we touch because you do the show and it gets aired and you have right. no idea really who's watching this. Right. So yeah, it's, I remember hearing I remember hearing that Bear and Barney both had. <laughs> Fan letters uh. from women in prison, <laughs> <laughs> because of the fact it was like because women in prison they're, they're they're stuck there. So this was like a connection to the to their kids that they weren't able to see. Right. So seeing these shows was still like that connection yes. for their kids, and so they would write like you know fan letters like thanking thanking right you know for the show. So it was like. Bear and Barney's got a fan base, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's amazing, and it, you know, it's new black. <laughs> I I had several of those experiences myself with um, a child that uh, was burned a huge part of her body, and you know, she just saw Barney and I love you, and just didn't even realize what had happened to her, and 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 I've seen a child that hadn't said a word in two years. And saw Barney and says Barney and and I've seen those things as well. Right. And what I learned and I think you learned as well is that when we're in those costumes, we're it's not Carrie, it's not Noel. You become Bear, yeah. or you become Barney because that's what they yeah. they didn't come for Carrie, they came for Barney. No. <laughs> and so your emotions and all that, you have to hold them in is difficult to do this sometimes. So. Oh yeah. That's My incredible. I've always liked the fact that I had so, this sort of like Clark Kent uh -huh. Superman identity because. Yeah. Bear could go could go on, do this stuff. People like you know, cheering and screaming and all that. And then afterwards, get out and like walk through the same crowd of people as no and no one has no idea whatsoever right. who I was, right. what I did. <laughs> and she loved that. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's what makes it so special. You realize that you know that you're doing something so much bigger than a job. You know, this, oh, this yeah. is. I was 23 when I started Barney, and I had to grow up very quickly because I realized this was a responsibility. It wasn't yeah. just a paycheck. It wasn't a job. This was um, right. an amazing yeah, it blessing. It's not, even, it's not even like a joke or anything. It's like it's 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 serious. I mean, yes. you, know, you also you also be you know you have to be professional. Yes. And, you, know, you show up on time. Right. You you know do the job. You do what's given to you. That's why I started after college. Uh, my my. My teacher for puppetry at Pratt was named uh, Kermit Love, and he designed and built Big Bird and Snuffy. And no, the frog was not named after him. It's just those weird coincidences. <laughs> but he uh, offered me a job to be his assistant okay. on Sesame Street How to cool help wrangle, take care of Big Bird. So I went right out into Sesame Street and TV right. production. And so before I was a puppeteer, for the show, I was the wrangler, and I learned so much going to the production meetings and just sitting there and listening, and then just watching like how a TV show is put together, and just like how you know professional these people are. Yes. Because yeah, you put you know it's Sesame Street, right. but you know it's it's you still have responsibility. And yes. It was it was it was really it was a really good learning curve for this like you know twenty three year old guy, right? <laughs> and uh, and getting to work on the the first movie so it's like it was it was great and then i've i've done auditions and uh training for the international versions of sesame street and i've done writing workshops for writers for the international versions um and then just having what i learned and then teaching it to them was great like i tell performers that you know sometimes first of all you're an actor right you know Jim always believed, you know, puppeteers were actors. We just act from the wrist up. Yes. So with, we're actors. Yes. And so you're you're acting. That camera, it's not a camera. That's a kid at home who has never seen you or this show ever. Right. And so you connect with that one kid who has never seen it, and that's what keep it keeps it fresh. Yes. I remember as Bear, every time I opened the door, I would open the door to that one kid who has never seen this character before. Right. <laughs> just to keep it fresh. And then I would tell them, like, every now and then, you know, you'll get a script that just blows. <laughs> and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just it's just nothing. Right. And say, so you have to find the fun in it. You have to figure out, how am I going to make this work? How am I going to have fun? Because if you're not going to have fun, it's going to translate 
to this character sure. not having fun. Sure. <laughs> so you have to figure out how to have fun with this. And you could add a joke as long as it's within the context right. of what you're trying to teach or do. Sure. You just can't pull it out of thin air. So well, it, was, it, it was really good. So. Yeah, well, absolutely. I went through it with, you know, Mr. Knickerbocker and the I Love You song. I probably performed them 10,000 times. And you find ways to do a, a little hop different or a little tail wag or something to make that special, that you're not going through the motions. Every time you're performing yeah. that song, it's special because those kids may never, yeah. it might be the first time seeing it. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, what, do you remember the first time you ever did an appearance like outside the studio? Yeah. As Barney? Yeah, I do. <laughs> like, and that, and that first time of just like, and just realizing like, oh dear God. Right. <laughs> it's like, it's like, first of all, they're actually watching the show. Right. Second of all, yeah. <laughs> they, they really, they're really enjoying this character to the point of like being like those, those, those women that you see that footage of the Beatles getting off the plane and the yeah. like, oh my God, they're just like <laughs> losing it. Right. Because <laughs> they're right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and it's just suddenly realizing like, wow. <laughs> right. Well, and yeah. you probably realize too, the difference between performing for the TV show and then performing live, especially doing meet and greets or doing hospital visits, because some kids oh. see a big seven foot dinosaur and they run right to Barney. And some kids, oh need to warm up a little bit. So when you're big or when you, you play, this big character you played a little smaller, you, yeah. I really learned how to re, kind of read children and read their emotions so that I didn't scare yeah. some, but some were ready to, you know, yeah, to exactly. dance with you right just, off the bat. Yeah, exactly. It was just, it's like one of those things where, and then I find out later on, like a lot of times when the, if a kid was crying, yes. it's because they were just so excited. Right. They were like that, that footage of those women crying when they saw the Beatles because it wasn't because they were afraid or sad. It was because it was just so much emotion right. that it just came out and like in tears. Right. And so then later on, the kids just like, you know, smiling. It's like, I met Bear. <laughs> just like smiling. <laughs> just like, it's like, it's like, really? <laughs> I was smiling when I met Bear. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, it was like, and I remember, yeah, like there was one meet and greet we did um, at uh, FAO Sports, and uh -huh. it was uh, to promote the new line of merchandise. Yeah, and I had done like a, my meet and greet. I was about to leave, uh -huh. and I heard like this kerfuffle. I love that word, kerfuffle. Right, right. <laughs> this, like, behind me, and it was this guy talking to the people, and I, he was like really angry for some reason. And so I had Bear turn around and come back, and I was like, "It's like, hey, is, you know, is everything okay?" And it turns out the guy, pretty much he lived like somewhere in Pennsylvania uh -huh. and like drove like almost two hours mm. so that his kid could meet Bear. Right. And so he was really just like, and it was like so close and it was like so, like so angry that Bear was leaving. And I'm like, and Bear's like, just put his hand on his shoulder and says, it's okay, I'm here now. It's like, what can I do for you? <laughs> it's like, it's like talking to the kid. And, like, and we just like had this picture, we talked for a minute, gave a hug. And like, man took shook Bear's hands. Like, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Isn't it amazing what a simple gesture of yeah. of a hug or a hand touch or oh yeah, how far it I, takes I, you. I, I knew then, and I know now, being one, it's like the most dangerous animal on earth is an irrational parent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the fact that I was able to calm this guy down, I was like, it's fine. I'm here. What do you want? Right. <laughs> Okay, right. it's all good. <laughs> it's a talking bear. Hey, <laughs> and so yeah, and it was like, and I remember we I did this appearance at the the World of Disney. It yeah. was on Fifth Avenue, and there was this couple that came, this young couple, and the girl. She must have been like I don't know, like in her twenties, but she she loved Bear, and she wanted to meet Bear. Right, and she was literally one of those women from the Beatles, where she just came up to Bear and she was just like weeping. Just like we need to be bear, just wanted to have a picture with bear. And the the boyfriend, God bless him, he was you could just see in his face how patient he was, just like he could not believe his girlfriend really wanted to do this. <laughs> well, I was like, sure. I was like, had it, gave a hug, and she was just like pretty much the woman was almost inconsolable when I did that. So it was like really funny how like 
bear just like transcended Asia. It's like there was something about him. Well, the, the character, I think it's it's that authenticity. I think it's you know it's it's it becomes their friend. It becomes someone that they can relate yeah. to. Yeah, I always said that bear. You know, in terms of like you know, you know, guys, he's a great catch. You know, right? He can cook. He can clean. <laughs> he can dance. He's great with kids. Okay, he has a little hair on his back, but other than that, he's a great catch. <laughs> So, what have been some of your other favorite characters? We to talk about. We were talking about so much bear, but I want to get in a couple other right. here real quick. Um, I know well, I love bear so much. I can talk about bear all day. Um, you did some work on the Good Night Show. Is that correct? I did. A lot of I was on. I was on that. with yeah. uh, on uh, a couple of those Sprout shows as well. Barney was on a couple of those shows. Right. So I saw that you you uh, worked with. Was it? Did you work with Nina and on the Good Night Show? I worked- I worked with um, Melanie. Okay. First. first, and actually, she was the first host. Okay. And I actually was the director for all those segments. So I got to direct. I didn't know that. Very all those cool. segments of the Die Show. Then they were um, switching over between Melanie and Nina. Okay. And so there was like this interim month where they asked, "No, would you be the host?" Oh wow! And I was like. Uh, okay. <laughs> and so I became the host. So I became Leo, the gardener. Okay. And I, and it was like for a month, sort of to transition into Nina. Uh, so this way they didn't have like a, a, a void. So that was interesting, playing playing a human character. And every now and then I would like, kind of like glance over at the monitor. Uh-huh. And the director was like, no, you're looking at the monitor. And w- w- which was always second nature to me, because that's how you puppeteer TV sure. puppetry. You look at the monitor. Right. So I would just glance over to see how I was looking. He's like, no, you're looking at the monitor. Like, right. <laughs> so, I have to, like, so then I actually printed out a picture of my son, who was like a baby at the time, and I taped it to like each camera. So this way I would like look at his picture whenever to keep myself from looking at the monitor. So I would like look at the, look at the, the picture of him to talk to him. So that was fun. That was that was great. And and then they went to to Nina, but that was okay. after. That was after. so I never actually got to meet Nina. I got to work with Star on the yes. pillow. Yes. <laughs> I worked with Star too. Yes. It was great. And then they rebuilt Star and uh and the puppeteer who was awesome. So yeah, that was yeah, so I, I did that. I've done it's like the nineties was great for puppetry. So I did if you Got to watch way too much television. Right. I uh, I did, uh, like I said, I mentioned um, Eureka's Castle. So I was Magellan, yes. the dragon, and I was um, Webster, the spider. Then after that, I did a show called The Puzzle Place. Okay. Now, The Puzzle Place was interesting because it's PBS. And unlike Nickelodeon or Disney, um, who have set times for their shows, right. with with your local PBS station and viewers uh, yeah. like you. Right. It depends upon when they want to fill their schedule. So some people remember Puzzle Place because they were able to watch it in the morning before school uh-huh. or in the afternoon after school. And there are some people who don't because it was put on right in the middle of the day when they were in school. Right. So they have no idea who this character is. So I've, I've done Comic-Con appearances. And like some people have no idea who Leon is. And then I'm always surprised by the people who actually do remember who he was because of the region right. that they, they were living in. And uh, the art was great. And then I did uh, Ubi, which was uh, a Nickelodeon show where it was it was our bare hands and these glass eyes on top. It's like, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and that's they paid us to do this. <laughs> and and then and then after that uh, I did Bear. But every now and then I also get to I'm also the resident puppeteer of HBO's Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. How so cool I get that? to do very un-kid show characters. Right. <laughs> and what's that been like for you to do something un-kid like? Oh, it's been great. It's been awesome. You can curse. Because <laughs> it's cable. <laughs> it's HBO. <laughs> you can just, you know, they'll say like, okay, so I get to say this word. So it's like, great. Dressed up as a squirrel. Right. Or, <laughs> and people ask, like, what's John Oliver like? It's like, he's the nicest guy. He is so sincerely like one of the nicest guys and i always describe his show as 60 minutes meets monty python because it's it's very informative show you will learn a lot but then he'll still stick in like the joke to make it more palpable sure and uh yeah and And, so and that's where the squirrel comes in 
that's when the squirrel comes in and like curses at a coal baron or right. there's like NBC Peacock will come in and then starts weeping over the sexual allegations of TV anchors or, you know, I've been a polar bear with a colonoscopy. I've been a oh, geez. Jeff the diseased lung in a cowboy hat. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I've been several wax presidents. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> all so they're, available, they're all challenging you. Yes, exactly. What now can we do? <laughs> what can we do now? <laughs> and it was actually really flattering when um, John was interviewed last year. And he talked about like the costume characters. And like, we bring in, um, and then we, we bring in Noel. And he actually mentioned my name. Oh, that's cool. To do stuff. And it's sometimes, if it's more, we'll bring in other people. But he said, but pretty much... When it comes to Mr. Nutterbutter, right. it's no. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's want, very flattering. I want to talk real quick about your new show, the, the show that means a lot to you, the project you're working yeah. on now. It's like going back to like all the fan letters I got. I've gotten fan letters from people who thank me for Bear mm-hmm. and parents who thank me for Bear, but also parents of kids with autism and special needs who thank me for Bear. And whose kids now in their twenties who will still watch the DVDs or the videotapes right. of Bear because it's just such a go-to comfort for them. And I realized there is no show like that now that that sincere, that gentle, that not in your face like Bear or Barney or Mister Rogers. Right. And so that's why, and I know for a fact that the networks aren't going to do it anytime soon. Yeah. So that's why I've been trying to develop my own show called The Show Me Show, which is on. I have a YouTube channel, the okay. Show Me Show YouTube channel, and we have a Patreon page, and we have a, uh, a shop at Zazzle, so you can buy merchandise. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but basically, it's, it's, I'm doing these little videos to make it more aware, and just like these fun little videos, but based on um, challenges that come a little bit harder for kids with autism and special needs, like change of plans, and uh, patience, and boundaries and just simple things like just say hi and um it's stuff that all kids should know but it's just a little harder right for kids with autism special needs so and i've been pitching it and shopping it around so i got them yes. crossed for you thank you so yeah so go subscribe tell your friends yes and we <laughs> will put the links on youtube <laughs> yeah we will we will put the links on our social media on our website and also on this video here Thank you. Uh, to send people yeah. away because I yeah. love what you're doing. I understand very much, Barney. We we um, were affected. I was affected a lot by kids with special needs and autism, and even this show, Purple Roads. I get a lot of messages um, thanking me and Barney for what we did with special needs and autism, and so I think it's wonderful what you're doing. Yeah, it's like I've been meeting so many people at uh, Comic Cons who grew up with Bear and who. Have admitted, like you know, they've had they're on the spectrum. They have autism. They, they have certain special needs. A couple of people actually said they were in two separate cons. They they said that they were recently diagnosed wow. as being on the spectrum, and to them it was such a relief because they kept wondering or being told, like you know, what's wrong with you? And then finally, they got tested and realized there's nothing wrong with me this right. is who i am and it's okay <laughs> and they would actually really because things have advanced so much in terms of understanding autism and special needs since you know in the past five years let alone 10 years and so just helping um helping parents and kids just have a little more fun right <laughs> yeah that's uh, so awesome. Do kids. <laughs> so this was fun. Thanks for fun. <laughs> so as as we finish up today, what was the experience like for for Bear? What was it? What was looking back at it now, and and having this new perspective, all these years later? What are you thinking these days about that wonderful show? Oh, it's like, well, I mean, that's what I'm trying to do with like the, the, the show me show mm-hmm. and just uh, pretty much what Jim believed, like, you know, just leave the world a little bit better right. because you were here. Yeah. And just the fact that with these characters that we do, we 
touched so many lives that some of whom we'll never ever meet, but what we've done will like help them. And it was such a positive thing for them, like for that moment called childhood. Like that was one of the, the bright spots. And there's so many people will never know how much we like touch their lives, but it's, it's truly wonderful and humbling to think that, you know, running around in a purple dinosaur or jamming your nose in the camera as right. a giant bear actually touched these people in such a good way. That was actually the last episode of Bear. That was um, my suggestion was, uh, what if everybody thought Bear was leaving? And so they wrote a script about that. And it turns out Bear wasn't leaving. He had won a contest <laughs> and got gets to take his friends to um, this resort. And the theme was appreciation. They appreciated Bear. So then Bear goes on the balcony of this resort room. And, of course, who's in the sky but Luna? And they're both surprised to see each other. Right. <laughs> and, uh, and they talk about how Bear talks about how he was made to feel so appreciated by everybody. And then Luna says, like, wouldn't it be nice if every day we could somehow, we touch each other's life every day. Wouldn't it be nice if somehow when we did have encounters, it was always a positive thing. And so that's, that's like pretty much the takeaway of, of all this. It's like, just be, you know, just be a little bit like, you know, nicer each day. Like today, think of one nice thing you possibly could do. And you don't need to be thanked for it. Just, just, just do it. Because that's what we did, you know, with our shows. Like we did the show, and we weren't expecting thanks from it. We just, we just did it. Right. It was, it was fun, and it was good. But and we did get thanks in the way that the kids reacted. See, that's the thing that's yeah, so amazing yeah. but we about it. Expecting. That was the thing. We, like, right. we just did it. And it wasn't until later on, like the thank yous. That's when you realize, oh, it's like. Okay, you are watching the show. Thank you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah so, just, yeah. so that was the big takeaway from Bear. It's just like, especially these days, like more than ever, just, just be a little kinder and a little nicer because you never know how it's going to touch somebody. I can't thank you enough for being here. It's been so <laughs> good to see you again. The memories are just flowing back. And I, I, I know, hearing I these stories are so amazing because I experienced several of those. And... I love hearing a different perspective in the, and hearing how much Bear meant to you because it meant so much to so many of yeah. us. Yeah, it still does. So it's like even after all these years, the fact that he's still part of people's childhood. Right. It's, it's great. So I don't take that lightly. So thank you for you know, allowing Bear to be part of your lives because he loved being a part of it. And, and real quick, as I'm, I keep saying I'm going to end, but I, I just can't get enough. What are you working? What, what are you working on this <laughs> spring? Our special coming up. <laughs> I know we're going longer. What is it? What are you working on this spring? Oh, the spring is like oh. So the thing is, because you're based in Texas, yes. Normally, I and my colleague Peter Lins, we do a master class in TV puppetry, right? Called Beyond the Sock. Oh, cool. We did not make up the title, <laughs> and it's. And it's, and it's done in uh, Denton, Texas, at the University of North Texas. And yes. registration will be starting soon. And normally, Peter and I are the two instructors to show you how we do what we do for Bear and the Muppets and Sesame Street. And then you get to make your own professional, like, puppet. Right, That could right. be used for these how shows. Cool that's, that? that's part of the deal. And did yeah. you get to keep? Um, Peter and I will not be there this year because we are both going to be working on the new Sesame Street movie that will be starting soon. Oh, and so we won't be there. However, the two instructors who will be there are very good friends of ours. One is Victor Yared, fresh from the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance, who played Hup, as well as master improviser for the show Puppet Up, which is live. They, they do tours. And the other is Tim Legasse. And Tim Legasse is a puppeteer director from, Crank, uh, from um, um, Crash and Bernstein, okay. from Ubi. He was Ubi. And from Between the Lions. He was the classic character, Artis Martibats. That's awesome. <laughs> and so they will be filling in for us. So that's, so that's coming up for us for, uh, for this spring. So if you want to learn how I do what I do, you know, <laughs> go to beyondthesock.com and registration will be opening soon and you can, you can see that. <laughs> well, and we'll put a link towards. Puppet. We'll put a link to that as well to send people yeah. that are interested in that because we're here in Texas, and so 
Um, yeah, I we'll, love. We'll I love. Let Texas. people Texas know about great. how to get to Denton. <laughs> yeah, Denton's great. Denton's an awesome, awesome little town. It's great. So if you want something, and it's usually the first week of June. So okay. it's just like that's it. It's like really quick and easy. Awesome. So, but it's like the start. A great way to start your summer. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, no, it was so great to see you. I'd love to have you back because I could sit here and talk to you for a long time. If you come back sometime, <laughs> it'd be awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. <laughs> well, thank everyone. Thank you so much. Remember to keep your eyes, ears, and your heart open, and you'll find your purple road. Thanks again, Noel, and I love you, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>